In the first tutorial, we use the rotor brush and the refine edge tools to isolate and select our subject inside of our layer tab. In this tutorial, we're now going to refine the areas that After Effects didn't do a very good job selecting on the first pass. So let's take our playhead and let's start to scrub through this. I'm gonna start at frame one. I'm just gonna to start to work my way to the right. And we can see right about here, right at about 11 frames, we have our first problem areas. Underneath his armpit here and next to his head, it started to grab the different lines that were perhaps similar contrast to the side of his head. I'm gonna zoom in using my mouse wheel and move the image around using spacebar. And I'm now going to use my roto brush tool, and again, the plus and the minus, holding alt on the keyboard to alternate. I'm gonna to start to remove the areas that it doesn't need. In this case, it's gonna be around his head. It missed a little bit of his ear, so I'm gonna change the size of my brush and add a little bit of the ear back. And then come down to his armpit, hold Alt on the keyboard, and subtract that area under his arm. Good, that's good for that frame. So now I wanna start moving frame by frame throughout my subject. I'm gonna hold Control or Command on the keyboard and use my right and left arrows to advance or move back. So if I hold control and hit the right arrow, I advance one frame. And this allows us now to see if it's missing anything frame by frame, like here it missed his ear. I'm just gonna click on his ear to select it, hold alt or option and subtract the area around his other ear and this area in between his glove. Hold control, hit the right arrow again and advance to the next frame. And again, we'll keep doing some cleanup. Now you might be thinking, this is gonna take forever. Yes, it will. It takes some time. The better After Effects does the initial track, the less work you'll have to do on this back end. But there's always gonna be some cleanup. And again, the better job you do on cleanup, the better the result is gonna be. Don't get super picky, because again, we do have some options to change over here in the actual effect after we've finished our selections. But really, that's just gonna be how clean our edges look. Um, it's not going to recapture anything that should have been added or removed during this stage. So I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward this process. I'm gonna go frame by frame and just capture and remove any areas that should have been refined. You can do so too. Okay, so now that we've taken the time and we've gone through and we've refined our selection frame by frame, it's time now to commit this in semi-permanence. So we've all now experienced how hard our computers have to work to propagate these edges. By using the freeze button down here, we essentially commit what we've done to memory, meaning After Effects doesn't have to work so hard to remember each line for every frame. Now freezing this doesn't like rasterize the image, meaning we, we can always go back and unfreeze it and change a frame. But freezing it really allows us to move forward with working with this image without After Effects having to think so hard. So once you like where your edges are at, you go ahead and hit the freeze button. And then give it some time and it's gonna go through and it's gonna work on this frame by frame again. But this time it's gonna commit it to memory. So let it do its work on the freezing end of things. Now keep an eye on this because once it gets past the four second mark, we don't need to let it keep propagating. So it looks like I still has a lot to go, but I'm already past my four second marks. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit stop. So 
So those frames are now frozen. And it says here, unfreeze to update. So again, we can unfreeze this and keep working. In this case though, I think this looks pretty good. So now when I come back to my composition tab, the background is gone. I can toggle on and off the alpha, and now it's ready for a background beneath it. So let's talk about now some of the controls we have in our effect controls tab. Now halfway through working with the rotor brush tool, I changed the quality from standard to best. This just allows After Effects to give a little extra oomph in how it's deciding on edges. Um, my edges were being a little strange there. You probably saw in some of the fast forwards that the refine edge was almost like taking over the entirety of his image, being a real bear. So changing that to best helped After Effects think through those edges a little bit better. So now we have two main settings down here, the roto brush mat and the refine edge mat. And we have similar looking settings for each. So let's talk first about the roto brush mat settings. So we can change the feathered edge here. So if I turn the white back on, um, I may even want to change my composition settings to be a black background. I can start to see the edges a bit clearer. So by changing the feather on this, by increasing that, it's gonna feather those edges, kind of soften them up a little bit. You can kind of see now around 40%, it really starts to feather out, but it, it starts to almost ruin those hard edges. So there's a fine line here. I'm gonna keep the feather at its default five. We have contrast, which if we increase, it's gonna change how the rotor brush mat views the contrasts of its edge. So if I decrease this, there's gonna be very little change in this regard. And you can see kind of a little bit of change right here. If I increase this, it gets a little bit more crispy. If I decrease this, it gets a little bit softer. So I'm gonna keep this at 0% for now. Shift edge allows us to kind of move the edge, kind of grow the edge in and out. Um, similar to chroma key, it's not doing a whole lot for me. We do have positive ends and the negative ends on the shift edge. But again, for this, it's not doing much. The reduced chatter is going to take areas like this down here. And as I increase my percentage for my reduced chatter, you can see it kind of just, again, kind of grows the edges. Chatter is a result from shifts in the boundaries frame by frame. So you can imagine if something's changing every frame and it's not precise, it's going to kind of result in like a wiggle or a chatter. Um, so by increasing this percentage here, it's going to kind of grow those edges to avoid that change. But it's also going to bring back more of that screen. So by keeping this at zero, it's going to chatter more, but be more accurate. By increasing this, it's going to chatter less, but then be less accurate on our edges. I'm going to go for more accuracy by keeping the chatter close to zero. Now we only had one edge for our refine edge and that was the hair on his arm here. So the refine edge matte options change the settings for this area only. So again, if I smooth this out, you start to see the hair on his arm smooth out a little bit. I could feather it, I could change the contrast to increase or decrease. And again, I could shift the edge out or in. You can see that change there. Again, it eats away at his arm on the negatives and it grows it on the positives. I'm gonna keep this at zero. I'll keep chatter reduction off for that and I do wanna check use motion blur. This is gonna be really important because there's a lot of motion blur on his arms. This is gonna allow that mat to kind of follow that motion blur. We have a whole bunch of motion blur settings here that change the samples and the shutter angle. These are the settings currently of our compositions. I'm gonna leave those by default. So those are the settings of the rotor brush and refine edge tool. And that's how we go frame by frame and refine our edges. Now in the coming exercise, we're going to finish using this image. We're gonna add a background and create a new composite that's gonna reward all of our hard work.